Hey YouTube, welcome back. We have build contest number eight here. This video is gonna be a nice long one. We'll be talking about all sorts of things, but what you need to know from the get-go is that we've done seven of these build contests before. If you haven't seen them, there is a complete playlist on YouTube with all of the build contests, including the build contest announcements as well. And in the, uh, well, what is this section called? In the archive section of my Discord, you will see all of the submissions and all the discussion for the previous contest there. So these build contests are not best build contest. They're not who can one shot the boss the fastest or who can push to a thousand corruption. These are sweet build contests because I think that makes for a better and more creative, more fun experience in the contest. So these are largely just for fun. The winners will be enshrined in our build contest YouTube anthologies and we'll give them some gift subs to the channel as well. But we explicitly do not have any uh, monetary recompense or uh, what do you call it? Monetary uh, prize for people who are winning. And I also don't want to because the intent of this is to encourage people to have fun and experiment and go out there and try weird things. And I think that when you tie money to it or when you try um, like corruption or killing bosses as fast as possible, you don't get the same kind of variety of submissions or people being willing to experiment and get some cool results out of it. We've had very cool results in the past. And this time we have Tempest Strike. Tempest Strike is a skill that's largely been a meme before 1.0 but the devs just uh, updated the skill. So it's essentially an entirely new skill altogether. And the intent of this contest is to explore, is it still a meme? <laughs> Let's find out. So uh, you can browse Discord if you want to, you can learn all about what we're doing here. But what we'll be doing first is going back to the very top of this list. And I have my 10 builds that we'll be highlighting. We have over 30 submissions, which is pretty neat. We've narrowed it down to 10, which we will be highlighting right here on stream right now. So let's grab the first one and learn. Uh, which ones we'll be talking about today? How do I search for stuff? There's a, there's a build called bees. So let's search for the bee build. This one. All right. Build number one. You got it. This is the bee geomancer. So this is, uh, this is bees that are actually useful and not just memes. We'll see about that. It uses the Halvar set, which is garbage in my opinion. So I'm already interested. Global stun chance, lots of rocks hitting the enemies, and it's not boring low life. Whoa. So they say Tempest Strike allows Shaman to be a true battle mage. Get in close, swing your stick, and cast all of your spells. We have strong storm stack generators from our 14 bees, <laughs> meaning we can expend storm stacks via Tempest Strike, as well as from natural decay, you know, once per second-ish. We can attack, we can melee attack or attack from range uh, with Tempest Strike, as our Tempest count as casting spells, and the cold and lightning Tempest are hit-based spells. We crit avalanches on the enemies. We have massive global stun chance modifiers. Gathering Storm also grants maelstrom stacks and gives large base critical strike chance to our sto uh, storm bolts. So, uh, let's find out what the hell is this all about? Bees. All right, let's, uh, let's put some volume on this and make it nice and loud as well. And let's see what's going on here. It's Joe here for the Tempest Strike build competition. Uh, we're not gonna watch all five minutes. I will be clicking around, but you know, let's see. This is the uh, B Geomancer. Uh, with avalanche uh, cast on crit using uh, the the fun Helvara's set uh, piece here. So the way this build works is uh, getting gathering storm just to one proc, letting your bees proc all of the stacks for storm bolts, uh, using maelstrom uh, stacks to get your crit high as well as to stock uh, start stocking your storm bolts and having war cry up for more maelstrom more melee damage and attack speed so i'm going to pause here and highlight a couple other things uh it's important to know that they need to attack with tempest strike at least once in order to gain a storm stack and then once they have one they'll gain more automatically from all their minions that are attacking as well this is a common theme that we're going to see across a couple other um a couple other submissions it's like a friends of the tempest kind of thing Sometimes we'll see that Friends of the Tempest is bugged. Sometimes we'll see that it's not bugged, but I wanted to call that out uh, nice and early so they knew exactly what that interaction was. Actually, before we go more into this, I'm actually gonna, I'll have to make a special YouTube chapter for this, but we're gonna pause for just a moment on H2O submission for their B Geomancer. 
and we're going to talk about known bugs because one of the common things that came up during this uh during this contest was a lot of people had many bugs that they ran into causing them to pivot from one build to the next build to the next build because they were trying to find something that wasn't bugged so this caused a little bit of frustration i'm going to copy paste this and give this to the developers as well because this is the kind of um, feedback that they can use to make these skills feel better in the future but yeah so we have a couple people here who uh, who ran into a handful of bugs i'm not going to read these but just know that there are going to be some bugs of things not working the way that they that people intended so let's go back to the submissions and i'm going to click at their um their planner here as well i think we have an idea of what's going on like they are they attack with gathering storm once they gain uh they gain that first storm stack friends of the tempest gives them more everything's converted to fizz bees are fizz which is hilarious so their bees are helping to proc friends of the tempest here so they're gaining more stacks their maelstrom gives them a whole bunch of stun stack uh stun chance here and then their damage looks to be from gathering storm storm bolts along with avalanche and the avalanche is being propped off of their this i guess this thing right yeah 100 chance to cast avalanche boulder at target when you crit cool pretty sure that's what's going on what is this thing 100 chance all three one two three plus two levels yeah sweet all right so is it good i don't know but it's cool it Aren't these things, like, super rare? I wonder if they're playing Merchant's Guild. Does it tell me if they're playing Merchant's Guild or not? Like, these bees for 10 seconds. These are, like, pretty pretty rare. That bee just avalanched on me. Yeah, the bee literally avalanches on people. It's pretty funny. All right, is there anything else we need to talk about? Uh, I don't think so. Given my experience doing these build contests in the past, I know that I need to keep up the pace, or else we're going to be here for literally hours and hours and hours. So... Let's keep going. The next one that we're going to be looking at is from uh, Chunky Papa. So let's do a Control F for Raptor. And we will look at build contest submission number two for the final voting here. So Chunky Papa submitted this thing. The I think, I, I suspect that this one really caught people's attention because it has 1,000 corruption in it, which I also think is pretty cool. Um, my personal bias is that ra like summon primal raptor is not a skill that exists. I thought that raptor is just a worse version of Sabretooth. Um, I don't know. I don't really play minions, but I have an opinion on a couple things anyways. So let's see what exactly they did. They're at a thousand corruption. Something's good here. Tempest Strike does not synergize with raptor on paper, <clears throat> but it actually boosted from borderline unplayable noob trap to S tier. Able to steamroll 1k corruption with realistic gear. I'm already in. I'm already listening. So what does Tempest Strike do? It's difficult to explain fully, but in short, by being a generically strong and fast attack, it's able to kickstart the Raptor engine, which has snowballing mechanics, when Swipe couldn't, or at least it was much harder to. It pushes the build through the critical point when things just start working and it feels good to play. Interesting. Raptor is low maintenance. The only gear investment required, uh, required is a Hakar's Phoenix, which gives you that automatic revival, which is great, and a body armor prefix for melee minion crit. With only these, uh, 200k per hit is a regular occurrence with some ramping, which apparently goes pretty fast, and you can go over 1 million when the stars align per crit. Strength takes care of the baseline damage before ramping Aspect of the Shark and the Warcry Berserk, while scaling armor and ward with cleaver solutions. So this is a low life build here. Attaching tornado to yourself and re-enabling the pull makes the clear much better. Oh. Re-enabling the pull. Oh. Oh, that's cute. Okay. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, turning yourself into a moving meat grinder. <laughs> uh, the main use of it is to drag and group mobs up while you can kite, allowing you and your raptor to wipe packs up easily. Uh, let's see the video. Let's let's go ahead and click on this thing. I like it when you call me Chunky Pop. One K corruption. I'm trying. I'm watching this. And I'm trying to figure out how much of the damage is theirs, how much of the damage is from it. 
It looks like their damage is like non negligible. Using the tornado, so the tornado nodes have like minus 100% pull when you put the tornado on your head, but then you can add 25 or 50 back onto the pull. Like minus 100 plus 25, like you're basically re enabling the pull. It's a cute piece of technology. I've never seen that used before. The Raptor NATO. Raptor NATO, dude. I love that. So let's go ahead and minimize this. I guess we can take a look at their gear as well, just real briefly. They are a low life build, peak of the mountain, normal looking stuff here. Bunch of melee attack speed, minion melee damage. Love to see it. So melee fizz. And like, so what's what's going on in Raptor? Do I know what the Raptor skill tree says? Raptor's melee chance to bleed, deal more damage per percentage of its missing health. The Raptor has increased melee attack speed, but 10% chance to lose 10% of its current health and melee attack. So this keeps it on low health, I guess. And then if it dies, your Hikaru's Phoenix brings it back to life. Damage? This is weird. It has 10% chance to lose 10% of its current health on melee attack. I mean... Sure. Alright, what else is going on? Deals more damage to bleeding. Raptor gains more melee attack speed for each nearby bleeding enemy. Sure. So like, ramp, ramp, ramp. Hmm. Raptor deals more crit damage, has a chance to do stuff. I literally don't know what this skill does. I have to read it. This is a melee damage. Your raptor gains more damage when it kills an enemy. So that's like the star's lining. Got it. So Tempest Strike is here in order to get enemies bleeding as quickly as possible. Is that it? Let's see. Attack speed, attack speed. Oh, Berserk. Berserk affects the raptor. So Berserk Fury. Is there Fury Totem? There's no Fury Totem here. That's kind of interesting. This stuff here. Jumps with you. And then they have... Oh, you just stack Shark really fast. Does Shark affect your minions as well? Is that it? This node? They're affected by Aspect of the Shark whenever you are. Okay, so you're stacking up. You're attacking really fast. You stack up Shark really fast. And like that's that's the thing that makes it apply? Or that makes the build really pop off? Okay. Cool. I mean, listen. A Thousand Corruption. It doesn't even look rancid. It gets to the point where the Raptor started killing things much faster. Love to see it. Okay. So, there's our Raptor build. We've done bees first. We did Raptor seconds. Our third build here... Trying to keep up the pace is uh is from someone uh, who they they didn't name their build this, but I named their build this. I named Gavarian's build minus seventeen hundred mana avalanche shaman, which to some of you who have played Last Epoch for a long time, you could abbreviate that by just saying avalanche, because avalanche tends to go really negative mana. So let's take a look at their video here. Negative 1,500 mana. Negative 1,700 mana. They got some crits going on. And they're summoning some minions as well, right? They have, they have five of these cold stone minions being summoned as well. Cool. L love it. Couldn't be happier. How many minions do we get? 21? 21 minions? 23 minions? GG or something. This minion bug got hotfixed. Is, is this a bug? If this build is bugged, let me know, Twitch chat. I have no context on that. So Gav says, they always say, turn your weakness into a strength. What is Shaman bad at? Having mana. <laughs> to start a mono, you slap the ground a couple of times to delete your mana. Then you start smacking things with zero mana cost Tempest Strike so all your idols can activate, proccing Avalanche for you. Each idol triggers two Aftershocks, which in turn trigger two Avalanches for each of those. If they crit, they trigger more. I have bad gear, so my crit's not great, but with better gear, it would get pretty consistent. I did not try ailments. That might be an interesting approach. 
All of this leaves you with negative mana and lots of small hits. Enter Font of the Erased. Suddenly, so Font of the Erased is the Weaver's Will Ring. You have Rapid Ward Gain to go with all of these other fun hitting rapid skill mechanics to take advantage of your inability to sustain mana. Note, Storm Totem and Gathering Storm are just nice to have um, because why not have a bunch of minions and you want some movement speed. So let's take a look. Oh my god, they did a jewel run. All right, let's go see it. This is this is not tier four Jura. This is like tier two, tier three, two or three, two or three, something like that. This is tier two. Got it. God bless. Bon okay, so. So the way the font of the erased works is if your ward goes less than your missing health so if you have less than 1700 okay so so like see how they're missing like 1500 health if their ward goes less than 1500 they rapidly recover ward so he does not rapidly recover ward if he goes over 1500 but he does rapidly recover ward if he goes under 1500. this is I swear to God, chat, if this build wins the contest, I'm going to put it on an altar saying that, listen, this is not a, this is not a contest about having the highest damage. It's a contest about making something sweet because, oh my God, this is some of the damage of all time. All right, we're going to pause. This. We're going to pause for just a moment and we're going to move on to the next build. Uh, the next one here is from Thunder Sphinx. This is called an Ice Age build. So let's go Control F Ice Age and see what we can find. Click. This is build number four. What do we got? Um, they do have a YouTube video. God bless. Right. This is Ice Age No Time for Nuts, aka Frigid Beasts. Sure. Build summary. Hosting an icy beast party is not the strongest, but it does feel fun. So Tempest Strike with a focus on Frigid Tempest, Chill, and Gladiator of Lagan. Gladiator of Lagan, of course, is the node that gives you and your minions a whole bunch of flat spell damage per your attacks recently. So your hits, uh, your hits recently. Summon Spriggan has a cold conversion to it and got Frostbite as well. Uh, Storm Crows can be... Uh, I guess they're giving us intelligence here and their cold conversion. Summon Scorpion... Has a cold conversion on it. Ice Tiger has a conversion on it. So in terms of being like a high quality build, I do want to say, I think that the like the best Beastmaster or like summon builds that I've seen on Primalist end up focusing on just one minion instead of having a whole bunch of minions. Why? Because you can take the nodes and say like more minion damage, but you can only have one. More minion damage, but you can only have one. And then it allows you to spec in other things like Frenzy Totem and Warcry, for example, and juice up just having that one minion. So that's, that's my opinion going into this. Um, let's see the video. I don't know. Is it sweet? I feel like I'm in game right now. Look at those frames, baby. Can I, can I get more frames? I was kidding. I want more of them. With screen shake enabled. Got it, got it, got it. There's no requirement to uh, to play these builds up to like level 100. There's no requirement to like kill tier 4 jewel roof that build submissions. But it is easier to showcase a build when you have all of the components put together, right? Like you have your end game stuff, you like you have unique items like maybe one LP, you're in empowered monoliths, you can like pop off and show off the build a little bit more. It's easier to show it off if you're at like more of an end game state of the build. I'm getting getting a little nauseated watching this. And I don't know if it's the screen shake or not the screen shake. It might be the lack of a loot filter. <laughs> I'm going to pause this because I need to keep focusing on the build contest and not pass out. Um, They say, let's see. They have some target gear here. Yeah, let's go see what their target gear is. I want to see this. So this is not a low life build. I'm I'm 
surprised to see the Wings of Argentus here. I think, generally speaking, Wings of Argentus is pretty niche. It's basically just a Warpath item. And even then, you're probably not using it on Warpath. I don't know. Uh, it used to be a bit better. So they nerfed the less damage modifier on Wings of Argentus. Um, and, like, other things have just been made stronger and stronger. And, like, the for like Warpath, you can have a base type with 700 flat armor on it these days. And, like, you'd like to have something with, like, LP, but it's really, really hard to get a LP on Wings of Argentus. So, I think Wings of Argentus, especially if you're not always moving, is just, like, a no-go. This is not what I'd be looking for here. Um, let's see what their skills are doing. So, the Tempest Strike is... Chance to freeze enemies. And they're disabling the wind, disabling the thunder, so they only have the, the cold going off. They're stacking up a whole bunch of Gladiator of Lagan to give flat spell damage to their minions. Does Scum and Scorpion have a spell? It does have a spell, right? It's more cold damage. They took the bleed chance, damage over time stuff. Venom Nova counts as a spell. Gotcha. They did put three points in Maternal Instinct, which is excellent flavor because the Mama Scorpion. All right, and then I have I, I do have a huge personal bias against Stormcrows because I think even even with considerable investment into their defenses, I do find that they die constantly. So I'm a little dubious about the uh, the Stormcrows here, but cool, cool build nevertheless. We are going to move on to the next build here, looking at build number five. Um, I will say I expect I expect uh, good things from build number five. I do expect good things from build number five because I've heard other people say that they really enjoyed looking at this one. So this build is from Penguin of Death. This is watch enemies crumble before the might of the Beastmaster's Crow Storm in last epoch. With the ceremonial sacrifice of squirrels getting nerfed by 35% in the patch notes. While explosive trap Donic Fissure, I love your spell <laughs> spelling of Donic Fissure. Uh, I took a break and I went by Beastmaster and it almost looks like a shaman. This bad boy features crows that don't die. Oh, go on. High corruption, 5 to 700. Uh, smooth gameplay, quality of life. You might even want to play this build for yourself. At the core of this build, we are using Gladiator of Lagan, which is, again, Tempest Strike. You attack, you give spell damage to everything around you, all your minions and yourself. Your crows deal more damage. Boring. However, that leaves one hell of a lot of room for utility and change within the build. So we have Crow Storm as a movement spill, a movement skill. Uh, allows us to reposition ourselves, sure. Tempest Strike, uh, Shock Stacks, and with Fulminating Strikes. Okay, so enemies have, or sorry, your crows have more damage per shock on the enemy. It's something like that, right? I'm gonna make sure that I know exactly what that note is real quick. Uh, fulminating, that's Fulminating Claw. Isn't there... Lightning resistance. What is what is this reference? What's fulminating strikes? So fulminating strikes is here. Oh, to, uh, okay. Let's see. It says uh, thunder or tempest strike deals more damage to shocked enemies. Okay, I I misremembered what this node was. So dealing more damage against shocked enemies. Frenzy totem for tanky crows. Cast speed on them. Love that. Tornado for a bit of utility. Attack cast movement speed. And then Wolf for plus one companion. So, technically, I, this isn't a bug, and it's been around for a long time. But you should know that EHG is interested in removing this functionality. Specking Summon Wolf just for the ability to have plus one companion is something that they intend in the future to make it local to Summon Wolf and not global so that you're specking Summon Wolf just for literally one node and nothing else. So keep that in mind for two years from now when they finally change that. Uh, let's take a look at their video and see what is going on here. What do you got? A bunch of ward. This is some corruption. We got like a nice beat working up.
I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Is this DMCA pre music? I'm gonna I'm gonna mute it. Hold on, hold on. We're muting it. Mute the music. Pause the music. It's important. It's very important that we pause the music. Can I edit that part of the video out? This is 527. This is this is good looking damage. I like this. Is this? Look at look at the left side of the screen. Look at chat. Is this what global chat looks like? You people use global chat? Why? What is the purpose of that? Uh, I like this. This is a good looking damage. It's also almost... They were up to like nearly 300 armor shred stacks. It's a good amount of armor shred stacks. I didn't realize that you could disable that. Yeah, you can absolutely disable global chat. It is in the options menu. I like this. And like the crows, the crows are standing in the damage over time. And like crow storm movement skill pulls your minions with you with the uh with the boot modifier. I expect that the boot modifier is in here, right? Uh current stuff. Oh, they don't have it. Hold on. How are they pulling their minions with them? Is that what Crow Storm does? Or the traversal? Oh, and your crows are teleported. Oh, they're teleported automatically? God bless. I love that. Ooh. Okay. So yeah, normally this node, your melee hits up a 20% chance to grant active crow storm crows more damage for 10 seconds, which is obviously completely absurd. Uh, and like swipe was a skill you had to use previously. But now that we have Tempest Strike, which has quadrupled the attack speed, that seems pretty good. I like it. Um, let's go see. I guess what else do they have here? Uh, we looked at this. Summon Wolf just for one node. Normal stuff. Refresher's uh, companion ability. More movement skills. That's actually kind of cute, isn't it? Higher fizz and elemental resistance. God bless. Also stores a percentage of the damage taken by you. What does that mean? Stores a person of the damage it receives, releasing it as after it explodes. People use these nodes? Really? That's wild. Uh, I guess. I don't know what else you would spec into. Health. I would just do I would just do health, right? Wild. And then there are Cleaver, Low Life, Artor's Legacy. Twisted Heart, because Twisted Heart's a really strong item. Weird. Alright. I like the looks of it. It's really neat. A crow build that doesn't die. God bless. Uh, moving on to our next build. We've done five builds. Number six here is another one that I expect good things from. Uh, can I scroll around and find it? Nope. So the next build here is from Amarathy. So this is called Mass Totems 2.0. Amarathy says 14 totems, 12 vines, minion crit capped, double traversal skill, tons of movement seed, Variants that allow you to do giga damage and an ethical amount of ward. Wait, ethical? I thought I thought we did unethical on this stream. Wait. This build pulls together many of the janky synergies of Shaman with Tempest Strike being that sweet thing that ties it all together. Oh, Tempest Strike is a sweet thing that ties everything together. All right. Unfortunately, I think this build is bugged. Unfortunately, Tempest Totems don't work with anything. Uh, so in this case, I've gone with Melee Tempestless Strike disabling all the Tempests, but ideally I would prefer to be using Tempest Totems instead. If you would like to see uh, the video, the cold version of this, when it's fixed, will be 10 times better. So what Amarathy is referring to here is one of the bugs we talked about at the beginning of the video, that is uh, in Gathering Storm, I guess we can pull this off, can't we? In Gathering Storm, there's a node here that many people tried to make use of, and it's this Friend of the Tempest node, and this does not work when you have cold conversion. And lots of people ran into this issue during the contest. So if you convert Gathering Storm to cold and you have cold minions, this node doesn't work. So Amarathy is saying here that in the future, when that gets bug fixed, 
he thinks that this build will be 10 times better, which is a big number. That is exciting. Let's see how this build looks. We'll pop up in the YouTube video first. Audio. Audio. Make it bigger. Oh no, is this is this my least favorite archetype in the entire game? Worse than minions? Oh my god, it is. Oh no, it is. It's my least favorite archetype in the entire game. Amarathi loves this archetype. This is this is a multi-form build. And by multi-form, I mean he's human and he's uh he's spriggan form. And he's swapping back and forth very often. One of the benefits of swapping back and forth is that you gain the uh the passive of druid, which is like 70% damage reduction if you've left a transform state recently, which is oftentimes complete flavor text. But if it is featured in a build, it's completely busted because that's a lot of DR with a pretty low cooldown. So holy shit. I I actually think that this should be removed from the game because like 90%, 99% of the time, it means nothing. And like when someone does use it, it's completely busted. And like to me, come on, EHG, dude. What are you doing? So when he transforms into an out of Spriggan form, he's also gaining armor. Or so he's gaining a uh, ward based on his armor. So I expect that he's stacking up a bunch of armor in this build. And then he's uh, using totems and then vines. And if they were like, if they were like cold converted, he'd deal like cold penetration as well based on the druid nodes. And then everything there is working with Friends of the Tempest. Take a look at this number here. It goes up to 15 because it'll only ever cap at 15. And then uh, he's gaining more storm stacks from the uh, from the minions as they attack. So as long as he has one storm stack, he'll always gain more sta storm stacks, even if he's currently converted into a uh, spriggan form. Also, I like the new mustache look. It's a nice look. Uh, let's take a look at the planner real quick. Like this. So he's got some uh, some strength, giving him intelligence, giving him crit off of fair bores. A lot of moving pieces. Very fun. Um, he has... How much armor does he have in this build? Yeah, 4,000 armor. So like every time he swaps forms, he's going to be gaining 4,000 armor off of the leaf barrier node. So that's exciting. His Tempest Strike is just there for melee attack speed think i guess it's expending storm stacks as well what is tempest strike doing here this this feels like a gathering storm spring and form storm totem thing like what is what is tempest strike do i have to watch the video don't make me do it hey youtube how we going we're back with another build guide and today we have mass totems what i is... am using this one particularly for the contest run by perry the pig um, well, what is Tempest Strike doing? Every so often, where there's a, sp a specific rule set, so this and this build is really awesome, and I like where it's done, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do after this. One, once they fix a bug, and two, once I feel like being unethical again, which is pretty quickly usually. Um, how we're doing it? You've seen some footage so far, but we're just getting a shit ton of minions. And you can see the kind of damage we're doing there. Our totems are crit capped, so they are like always critting. And there's a lot of moving pieces in the build. So while he's but in human form, he just holds down right click. Crits that they're doing. Some of the Thorn Totem crits are well over 100k. Some of them are on the bit of the lower side, towards 26k ish. You can see there, but the the speed at which I'm doing it is amazing because I have. Um, We've got 8 plus 5 plus 1 is 14 totems, plus up to uh, 12 vines as well. So you can see there that I have a lot of things to do. Uh, how this build works is probably going to make a lot more sense once you see my items and the Tempest Strike skill tree. So as a lot of people would be doing is running the Gladiator of Lagon and then also using Scheme of the Architect. So this is going to give a whole bunch of flat spell damage to our minions, um, which is double because I meet this. So I can get up to about 20 stacks, I would say, with Tempest Strike. Uh, I'm doing the No Tempest setup, pretty familiar, as well as the Stormbolt expenditure. Um, but that gives me about 20 stacks, so 160 flat for my totems. Seems pretty crazy. 
Um, and then I'm using the Ferrobores combo to gain intelligence based on, sorry, flat crit based on intelligence. And then I'm using a cleaver solution to give me the intelligence. So I stack strength um, above 50, which you can see there, I've got 52. That strength is then converted into intelligence. So then I have 52 intelligence for my totems and that's why they're critting because it doesn't need too much. Uh, I'm using the Spriggan tree, so I'm- I'm gonna pause it there because I think we know what we need to know about the build. If you'd like to watch this in its entirety, you can always jump into the Discord, look at the build submissions, or you can uh, follow Amarathi on YouTube as well. So, let's jump over to the next build. That was number six. Number seven is the first that we've seen of a new archetype. So let's go, let's go control F, Rive, and you'll see why. Let's see, where is it? <clears throat> Is it this one right here? It is this one right here. So here's here's the meme that kind of ties the room together. We have a couple people who have taken Tempest Strike and disabled all that nonsense spell damage stuff, and they're just attacking with giga attack speed. So we have one thing here, and then we're gonna have one other build that I think is doing something similar later on. We'll see. So this is X1, 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 X2, Rive Beastmaster quadruple question mark do you love swinging your huge sword all over the place do i look like an anime character slashing and leaping toward enemies do you despise magic and petty tricks do you want to let your minions do you not want to let your minions do all the work well come come courtesy of the last laugh corporation here's our second installment of the last laugh series tempest <coughs> um rive beastmaster whether you want the unga boonga or you're an edgy teenager wanting to cosplay some samurai we got you just go to your nearest bazaar, contact your local oracle to get your copy of the Last Laugh Unique Sword, and start slashing with your te it's Rive Beastmaster. Alright, the dog is not a minion, but he's actually man's best friend. Okay, so there's a dog in this build, probably for Aspect of the Lynx, but we'll see. The moment that I saw this kill through for Tempest Strike, I had one thing in mind. Pure, unadulterated melee. With my current favorite Last Laugh weapon, it's got a bunch of uh, kill threshold on it, which is very neat. There's not much to explain about the melee beastmaster. We punch things. We have 267 attack speed for Tempest Strike with my current gear. Speaking of gear, I went Merchant's Guild for the first time ever, and while I uh, while I did hit rank seven, I'm not in the mood for gear optimization until I hit rank eight. So just bear with me. Let's take a look at the video first, and then we will look at their gear and see what exactly they're pitching here. Pure unadulterated melee. How is it? Is is strike it's not it's not tempest strike it's just strike is strike any good let's find out that's that's some aoe I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause for a moment here. I just want to point out to you, this is, this is an educational stream. This attack right here. You see, you see this attack. It's like, it's like a little bowling ball. You can see the two pink lines on the screen. Like the, the one, the, the attack that like doesn't, doesn't quite one shot him. But it deals a fuck ton of damage. This thing. Did you know that she literally only uses this attack if you're playing melee? If you don't use a melee attack, if you don't use any skills that have the melee tag on them, she literally will never use this attack. Come on, EHG. What are you doing to me? Why? Why? Oh. <laughs> Love that mechanic. Love that. This is this is some appropriate damage, by the way. This is tier four jewel, huh? Look at that AoE. It's I want I want this this should be like normal for every melee build. This this should be like the normal AoE that every single melee build gets. This looks fun. Look at that. This this shouldn't be like insane AoE. This should be like this is what every melee build gets. 
All right. Can we... Let's see some, like... How, where's the... Give me some clear speed real quick. Now, just consider... Just consider. Hold on, hold on. Consider if they had, like, double movement speed plus haste. Just, con like, we, we talk about movement speed a lot. And, like, their damage is obviously very good. Walking, walking. All right. The suspense. The bug of Fury Leap, where, like, you just kind of stand still midair. I am, I am happy that this looks so fun. And that it looks like it has appropriate damage. That makes me very happy. Uh, let's go look at their gear real quick. Uh, just real fucking honest melee gear. Fiery dragon shoes for no particular reason, just to give them the crit uh, reduction. Uh, they could have more damage if they just use a shattered chains. So that would give them another twenty percent more damage on top of this. So yeah, just imagine this build with 20% more damage on it. Yeah. Yeah. No LP on the Titan Heart. You could have like percent life. No LP on the boots. Could be hybrid. Yeah. You could you could get like a little bit more life on this character. Definitely. Summon Wolf. Okay, so for people who don't know if you don't play Beastmasters, Summon Wolf is quite literally just there for the Beastmaster skill tree. There are these things called Aspect of the Lynx. When you activate it, Instead of having 60 crit multi, you gain another 60 crit, 60 crit multi on top of that. So this is a 120 crit multi from Aspen Lynx. And then while you have Lynx active, they only have one point in this for 3% damage leashes health on crit, but it goes up to 15% damage leashes health on crit. So potentially a fuck ton of leech, which is uh, very neat. All right, let's shelf that. We're going to keep going. Uh, next up, we have three more to go. So this is number seven coming up next. We're looking for a build called Force of Nature. Force of Nature, this guy. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I think it's Johnism. This is Force of Nature, Nature. Melee character with lots of the AoE shenanigans going on. Having the Force of Nature in mind, I use Tornado, Avalanche, Maelstrom, along with Tempest Strike to simulate a blizzard storm that rips everything apart. The sweet part of the build is that you just walk through Monoliths with no worries, Occasionally meleeing for extra spell damage from that gladiator, uh, Ligon's gladiator, gladiator Ligon node that we talked about. And the tornado proc as well. Scaling Ellie Dot basically scales everything except for Avalanche because we have tornado converted to fire and we're stacking frostbite on hit. Cool. So this is like an all damage is good damage kind of thing. Uh, let's see what the video is doing over here. Let's take a look. With Wondershare, Wondershare Filmora. Um, keep in mind that OBS is free and OBS doesn't put this thing on your recording. <laughs> yeah, just use OBS. I promise OBS won't hurt you. Great. All right, so it's a low life build. They're scaling Ellie Dots. It's like all damage is good damage. They got some frostbites going on. Maelstrom does some damage. Tornado does some damage. And then Avalanche happens to exist. I wonder if they're crit. They might be like a singularity build. Given that I see all yellow numbers all the time, I'm imagining they're probably a singularity build. This is 184 more health and damage. I don't know my calculations perfectly. Is this like 200 corruption, 300 corruption, something like that? All right, let's see. Uh, they said that there was really nice gameplay in monoliths. Let's fast forward a little bit and see what the monolith gameplay looks like. You know, one thing that really stands out to me about all these Tempest Strike builds is like the attack speed looks fun because you can scale it. Who would have thought that like allowing a skill to scale with attack speed would do so much to have the skill be... Fun. 
it really took us a long time to get to the point with uh, with Tempest Strike that we felt like we were allowed to have fun. Huh. All right. Let's go ahead and pause this then. Uh, let's go on to our next build planner here. This is number nine. This is called Turbo Tempest Strike Beastmaster. If I search for the word turbo, is it going to show up? It does. All right. This is Valinov submission, build number nine for us. This person says, are you a windmill enthusiast? If so, this windmill simulator with massive attack speed Tempest Strike. Uh, with max buffs, our Tempest Strike is over 300% increased attack speed. I'm currently around 4,000% increased damage when accounting for percent increased and percent more damage modifiers, which is then increased by Tempest Strike's four multipliers. The damage showcase has room for, uh, for growth. I could have another 200 or 300 regen with different gearing. Oh, regen. What's the regen build look like? My crit chance is only 69, so there's room for further growth there as well. You could also add a Throne of Ambition for another global more multiplier for increased damage. On the defensive side, it's about as tanky as you'll get on a health-based dual-wield character. I definitely have room to improve on that front as well. I have not found a 2 LP Shattered Chains, which is 20% more melee damage. And I missed my health, health regen roll on the one LP that I did have. It's still fully capable of face tanking tier 4 Jolra and running 400 corruption with ease. I have other ideas that did more damage, but Tempest Strike wasn't the main source of damage. I felt like this build was the coolest use of Tempest Strike because Tempest Strike is the primary use of damage. I liked to see it chopping down all the enemies instead of just being another button to hold. All right. Valinov, sing to me. What do you got? What's it up, sound YouTube? I'm bound off here with my Tempest Strike build contest submission. My Turbo Tempest Strike beat. So, tried a lot of different things. Um, this is something a little off meta. It kind of reminds me of you know, the old Turbo Swipe Beat Master, but even faster with uh, better AoE on our uh, spammable ability. The increased AoEs from the Tempest Strike tree you feel really comfy and makes the clear for our monoliths and uh, running through dungeons feel a lot better in my I like it a lot more than uh, Swipe, which I've played in the past. That's saying something. And a lot of people do enjoy Swipe. And this is the uh, archetypal, you know, turbo attack speed, bonky melee build. Um, but overall feels really, really good. We utilize the Shattered Lance set to stack our HP regen and also give us a large amount of uh, cold increase melee damage. Um, a lot of our flight is cold thanks to that Shatterlance sword we are using. Um, we additionally, we use uh, Aspect of the Shark, Aspect of the Lynx to boost our melee damage, our attack speed, and our crit damage uh, exceptionally high. We use- Yeah, so uh, Swipe, Swipe has a whole bunch of synergy with Shard of the Shattered Lance because it gives you a bunch of health regen. He's got it on cooldown here, and I'm not cool sure exactly why. They get a few stacks of Aspect of the Panther, increasing our health regen further. If you look at our the planner I, I listed, with the conditions it has listed, it puts my percent cold increase at about 2,400 on the actual stats. In-game, we're actually looking at probably closer to 4,000% increase. Um, just going off of what the discrepancy on the increase for general melee damage is, uh, First, my stat sheet. So on Last Epoch Tools, we're showing about 1,200% uh, melee damage increase. In game, I'm looking at about 1,700%. So that's another 500% more than what the planner shows. And Weird. Then, um, my regen is actually about 300 higher, so that almost doubles the cold bonus. So yeah, we're looking at about 4,400% uh, increase cold melee and uh, our regular melee damage is also quite nice. A few points uh, I'd like to point out about my gearing. Uh, my katana, I would much rather have... All right, so I'm going to pause this here, and we're going to go take a look at what their gear is looking like. Let's pop open the build planner. <clears throat> so again, we see like melee builds with Siphon of Anger, Shard, uh, Shadow Chains. This is giving you the uh, enemies take percent increased damage and the 20% more. So the dual wielding with the katana. Crit chance, melee crits. We have swipe on a cooldown. 
which is activating Howl, I guess. When you attack once, you gain a stack. Increase health regen per stack. Maximum stacks is two. So, like, how does this build compare to, like, a swipe character doing the same thing? It does activate Howl, right? And Howl gives you, what was it, like, 25% more damage? Something like that? I can hold down Z and find out. Yeah, 25% more melee damage off Howl. <clears throat> which is a great thing to have there. It's 35%? Really? Oh, is that, like, not updated? 35% went specced. Gotcha. Oh, is there, like, increased effect in here? How melee damage... Got it, got it. How melee attack speed, this thing here. Okay. And then what is Tempest like doing for us? We're disabling everything. Melee damage stuff here. All the more multi. So minus attack speed. Or sorry, the minus mana cost. More, more, more. So, like, we're, we're pretty much just grabbing all the more stuff. Melee damage with an axe or a maze. Like, nothing down here, huh? Well, I guess we're not using an axe or a maze, are we? Got it. Cool. Let's take a look at their mastery real quick. Berserker, we're not playing low life, but it's fine. And then, like, all of our links. A lot of Viper for the 100%. Um, oh, sorry, just for the, uh, for the attack speed. Because we don't use the damage over time. Got it. Pretty normal looking stuff. It's funny. I feel like leveling this character wouldn't be particularly fun. Like, ugh. leveling a primalist is a slog. But once you get to, like, level 100, there's some really fun builds you get to play. But, like, ugh, all these nodes here are so boring. All these nodes here are, like, nice and boring. Like, I feel like ugh, whenever I play one of these primalist builds, you just get nothing until, like, level, like, 60. And you're like, oh, now we get, like, shark on hits. Now we finally get links. Now we get double crit multi and, like, double melee. Or, like, um, double critical strike chance. You're leveling with self-cast tornado? Really? Interesting, interesting. I wonder about, like, tornado plus uh plus gathering storm. Maybe that's a better leveling thing. But, like, I'm looking at all these primalist builds. Like, these do look cool. These do look fun. Man, it is a slog to level with with, uh, with the primalist. But maybe, maybe post 1.0 with Tempest Strike and Gathering Storm. Maybe there's like a better thing we can do for leveling. Yeah. All right, cool. We have one more build to look at. The very last build here is from Chase underscore Requiem. And we are using a unique item, which sounds... Uh, how do I put this? Unique. Jasper Searing Pride is the name of the unique staff. So they say... This build is to push the limits of the staff Jasper's Searing Pride. It has a really strong buff built into itself for hit-based builds and two major limiting factors to balance it out. One, lack of crit, but you can counter this with legendary affix, which is true. Uh, low attack speed, and staves cannot roll attack speed on them, and they have low base attack speed, which is very interesting. So they say, enter Tempest Strike Beastmaster. I believe this is the most attack speed from only passives, plus skill tree that you can get in the game, so it's perfect to push Jasper's buff to the max. Warcry gives us even more attack speed. Uh, high amounts of flat damage work great with Earthquake. So I guess they're Tempest Strike plus Earthquake. Cool. This may seem like an EQ build, but Tempest Strike is really the heavy lifter here, in my opinion, as it does a good damage on its own with a constant shock plus haste and single-handedly takes care of clear. Personally, this person says, I dislike generator skills that deal no damage. Looking at you, Firebrand. I agree. The buffed wolf is great for more melee damage. Also enables links to help cap crit, which is great. Fury Leap is good uh, utility for clearing. However, it can be substituted with Frenzy Totem for even better single target smash. Uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at a video here and then we'll poke around their build planners. So we have two videos. Let's look at the... I want, I want some single target. Pause this, jump over here. So Jasper Searing Pride, melee, crit, punch him. Just good, honest, 
punching jeweler in the face. That is some big fucking damage. Yeah, all right. All right, so what if what if you weapon swapped to the last laugh and then you had culling strike built into your weapon? Oh. <laughs> uh there's another video here as well. Pause this. This is kind of like another boss kill, but we'll see what this is. Again, the melee attack range looks wonderful. I am once again asking EHG for this to be not the exception of melee, but rather the norm for melee. Just like... Is, is this one of the best melee skills in the game? Like, Rive. Rive's number one. I love Rive. Rive's great. This has got to be like top five. Top three? Top five? Top three? Top five? Like, the AoE? The attack speed? The fact that you're like a melee primalist who already has like a bunch of DR built into their kit. You get Warcry, Frenzy Totem. The range, the range looks really nice. All right, uh, let's take a look at their build planner as well. Where is it? Uh, one of these kind of ideal build planner. Let's see what they got. All right, Jasper Searing Pride, trying to get LP melee crit on it. So the thing they're building around is those last two lines of text. When you use a melee attack and hits, you gain Searing Blades for 16 seconds. Each stack gives you melee, uh, fire damage, and melee ignite chance. Yeah, so there's like a, a ramping amount of flat damage built into the character. This is cool. Again, they could have even more damage if they just used a Shattered Chains. Another 20% more damage is missing from this build. Which is kind of wild if you think about it. Tempest Strike. More, 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 disable, disable, disable. It's so clean. How, how can I complain? Just like giga attack speed. Yeah. Um, is it? It's melee fire damage, huh? What else you on head? Armor, armor stuff so they, they have like no fish or anything right they're just hitting things i love it has voting started yet voting is about to start we have talked about the 10 build submissions so we talked about let's see let's uh let's pull up this because i do need to make a straw poll for you right now let's go ahead and do that create a straw poll the 10 builds that we will be voting on will be the B build. Remember, the B build was uh, making use of Friends of the Tempest. And they were using the Bs as a Fizz skill to proc Gathering Storm and then buffing everything up with their uh, with their Tempest Strike. We had a Low Life Tempest Strike Raptor build. They were like 1,000 Corruption. We had a build that was net negative 1700 mana using Avalanche, attacking with their Tempest Strike to juice up their spell damage. We had Thunder Sphinx at number four. They had a bunch of various beasts in the build. So they had like Tempest Strike and then a bunch of cold converted minions. The fifth option here is the Beastmaster Crowstorm build. This was a uh, crow build that had minion survivability highlighted. Looked quite good. Next one was an Amarathia build. This was uh like I'm gonna I'm gonna write like multi-form so that people remember what I'm talking about. You like swapping between a human form and spriggan form. We had the Rive Beastmaster. This build was uh last laugh. Next up, we had Force of Nature Avalanche Runner build. Then we had Valinov's at number 9, Turbo Tempest Strike Beastmaster, and this was Hal 3 Gen. 
was their uh, their way of going about this. And then the very last, but certainly not least, was the one we just looked at: Chase Requiem's Jasper Searing Smash. I'm just gonna I'm gonna write I'm gonna write Jasper Searing Pride so people remember exactly what's going on. So uh, we're gonna have multiple choice. No. Selection multiple options. No. Block VPN users. Yes. Fuck them. Uh, I can close a poll. I'm gonna like close a poll tomorrow, can't I? And then like all have access to it. Close it on the 16th. Do 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 do. Done. Allow comments. No. Hide share button. Uh, results visibility, not public. Wait, public after vote. Wait, public after after end date. Oh, that means that only I get access to it. There we go, dude. All right, so let's go ahead and create this. Create poll. All right, this is going right here in the Twitch chats. I will pin this as well. Yeah, I'll pin this right now. If you are watching here live on Twitch, I encourage you to take a look at that. We just walked through 10 builds. We looked at the videos. We looked at the build planners, but what people are trying to do with Tempest Strike to make it as sweet as possible. Remember, this is not necessarily a contest about like being like one-shotting tier four Ajura or uh, getting to a thousand corruption. More specifically, this contest is like, what can we do with Tempest Strike that's sweet? What's a cool interaction that we can try to highlight, even though there are a couple bugs with the skill that we discovered along the way. I should look at yours right now. All right, I'm gonna look at yours, Dread, while we uh, while we wait. You should know that I. Wait, you posted a video after the facts. You monster. <laughs> so, uh, Dread missed the submission deadline, and then even when he did submit, he didn't have a video, which means that he was excluded from the voting. So, Dread, uh, being the content creator that he is, he still benefits from participating in this contest. So we're going to watch Dread's content as Twitch chat votes in the straw poll that we just listed there. Uh, what is this? Get him. Are you, are you nine crit? Manka? Dual wield. Undisputed. Dual wield undisputed for the physical damage. Oh, and then tornado. Oh. <gasps> Oh, he's going Fizz Spell Dot. No Armor Shred, no Ellie Dot Scaling, no Elemental Penetration. Taste of Blood. No, that's um, that's Undisputed. Oh. I like the... Oh, shit, he's fucking dead. Okay, wait, 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 he's alive! So the Axe obviously has no spell damage on it, so he's using Gladiator Lagan to get all the flat damage. And then all the percent increase damage comes from attacking a whole bunch and stacking up the undisputed that he's wielding. Yeah. You have a description of the build? I feel like I know what's going on, but sure, we'll see. Highest base attack for the game, 1.833. Pretty fucking fast. Um we attack a whole bunch. Why bleed? Oh, it's a bleed build? Mole? Melee attack speed, percent increase physical damage. Wing guards, 69%. We don't use self the wound because it sucks. Uh, basic attack. Basic attack plus. Living bleeding blender. Oh, I, I was so wrong. I thought it was a spell damage build. Oh. Validators, wing guard, bleed, bleed, bleed. Melee attacks, we bleed on hit stuff. Uh, bleed duration, aspect of the boar. Bleed duration, aspect of the boar. Stun avoidance. Oh. Physical damage, or sorry, damage over time. Fizz res. I assumed that I assumed wrong. You have stationary tornadoes. Like, if you could have Trail of Storms, Trail of Storms would be so good. What's your chest piece? Plus Tempest Strike, Bleed Duration stuff. Like this, this would be so good. But I guess Tornado is not here for damage. You do have Gathering Storm here as well. Gotcha, gotcha. What's this? No spin a storm stack. But like you're not generating storm stacks, right? One, two, three. I wonder. I wonder about these three points in storm or frequency instead. 
it, it's it's kind of like damage, but it's more for the suck. I like it. I like it. Um, quality of life, attack speed, stuff. Hilarious using Totemic Heart. The first person, chat, you should know this. The first person I've ever seen use Totemic Heart with Warcry, Warcry Totems, was someone who was playing Frostbite Warcry Totems as a build. And that was the first time that I ever heard of anyone taking this node. Do you know who that person was? Abraham Lincoln. No, it was actually Judd. Judd, the, uh, you know, Mox Judd. From EHG. Which is hilarious. Um, this is pretty cool. Pass it here. Bleed stuff, attack speed. Shark, literally just for attack speed. Love to see it. One point in Druid, just to make sure that I click on it to see what it is. It makes melee not feel like shit to play. Big mood. Big mood in that regard. 2LP, Undisputeds, Merchant's Guild, Melee Tags be Bleed on Hits. It is pretty sick. I, I do like it. I do like the idea a lot. Uh, I'm going to give a few more minutes to people who are going to vote. So, again... Look at the wing guards. Look at that three LP wing guard for like well, it's like half a mil gold, like five hundred k. Absolutely stupid. Five hundred k, yo, dude, merchant skill. Uh, again, for the people who are here in chat, take a look at the pinned comment in chat. There's a straw poll waiting for you. Please vote for the build that we just looked at. Which one you think is the sweetest build? Which one you think highlights something particularly cool? Which one makes you want to log in and level up a primalist? Uh, I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. When I come back, we will uh, take a look at the results of the poll, which only I have and no one else has, because that's what streamer privilege is all about. Man, I should, yeah, I make that joke, but where is, where's my link? Um, did I lose the link? Oh, it's right here. Oh, it is right there. I'm going to hide it. Well, I, I can show results. Show results. I don't want to click show results yet. I'll click show results after I use the restroom. I'll be back in a moment, chat. Thanks for being here. I'd like to think that that is a sufficient amount of time. What do you think? Is that enough? Yes, definitely. Without a doubt. Indubitably. All right, let's pop it open. What do we got? H2O, Bs. We had a B. I can't believe we actually had like an actual factual B build in here. All right. Show results. What do you got? All right, all right, all right. We uh, we've got we've got a couple builds. 
that are really close for third place. And people are still voting. You're still voting? Chat, how can you still be voting? What are you doing? <laughs> All right. There's a couple that are really close for third place. But we have we have a clear. You're literally making it worse by the second. You're literally making it worse by the seconds. Can I make you stop voting? <laughs> it's hard to choose between them. Good. That is the dream. It makes me so happy to hear you say that. All right. We have a handful of votes. If you haven't voted yet, quit it. Stop the count. I, I would like to point out that we have presently 9,999 followers on Twitch. So if someone were to follow right now, they would definitively be the 10,000th person to follow the stream on twitch.tv. Slash pair of the pig. Just, just, by the way, Drake Oric, you are literally, no, 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 doesn't count anymore. Stop following. No more, no more, no one else. No one else gets to follow. But I, I, I'm pretty sure that Drake Oric is the 10,000th person following. Look at that. Thanks for the subs as well. Appreciate that. Let's, uh, let's pop it open. Has it settled down? Have you stopped voting yet? I'm going to, I'm going to call it right here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open up my notepad. I'm going to paste it. So this is, this is person number one. This is person number two. And this is person number three. Uh, I'm going to yoink this number as well. Just for later on. There's, there's literally three tied for third place. You're killing me. Why you gotta do this to me? Like, second second place and first place. I know who's getting second place. I know who's getting first place. Like, third place is hotly contested. It is split. Uh, should, I, like, should I do all of them? I'll just do all of them. Uh, let's do this kind of thing. I need Microsoft Paint real quick. Stop looking. Stop it. Come on, Microsoft Paint. All right. Assuming that you didn't look at the screenshot that I just got. Our third place builds. Third place build number one is the Turbo Tempest Strike Beastmaster by Valinov. This is a third place build number one. Attacking as fast as possible. Not playing Tempest Strike, but more like Strike. Because there's no Tempest involved. They were using uh, Shard of the Shadow Lance, and building a bunch of health regeneration to scale their percent increased cold damage. Pretty sweet. Congratulations, Valinov. Uh, number two. Third place build number two is Amarathi's build. Amarathi. Amarathi submitted my least favorite archetype in all of the last epoch, even worse than minions, but he's also playing it as a minion build. So it's a multi-form minion build. Truly just not at all, but I personally want to play. But taking advantage of the buffs that you gain by swapping between Spriggan form and human form, and then having as many minions as possible. It sounds like when his build gets bug fixed, it's going to have 10 times the damage, and the damage already looks good. So that's exciting. Third place build number three is another minion build. And this is Summon Raptor. The Low Life Tempest Strike Raptor, aka the Raptor NATO. This build looked pretty sick. I am unsurprised to see it in the top three. So that is a very cool build. I didn't know that Raptor was a real skill, but apparently it is totally fine if you can ramp it up fast enough at the beginning of Neko. In second place, we have from roll. Jasper Searing Pride. So this is Chase Requiem's build. This is build number 10 on the straw poll. This was uh, somebody who was using the, in in the incredible amount of melee attack speed that Beastmaster has access to to scale up Jasper Searing Pride, buff up that flat damage, and hit like a truck. They had really strong damage, and the build looked pretty fun to play with all the extra AoE that you get on Tempest Strike 
when you disable all the Tempests. It seems like people are really into disabling the Tempest on Tempest Strike and just hitting things with it. So, cool, man. I like that. Congratulations to Chase Requiem for second place. On first place, we have... The best melee skill in the game, Rive. Alright. Tempest, spell damage, totems, random crap. Uh, Rive. So the sweetest build that Twitch chat likes the most, and people in Discord voted on the most. And people in social media think it's just the best thing to do with this hot new spell damage minion thing is to hit people with it. It reminds me of the fact that I love the way in which Last Epoch is distinct from Path of Exile. Because in Path of Exile, a wand is not a melee weapon. But in Last Epoch, it's just a stick. And you can hit someone with it if you want to. I'm so happy. So pure, unadulterated melee, using a last laugh, just bonking people over the head and disabling all that stupid magic stuff. So congratulations to X1, 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 X2 for submitting this build. You'll be getting a gift sub arena to the channel along with the other uh, top three and top two and top one, third place, second place, first place people will all be getting gift subs. And you will be uh, forever memorialized in Discord in the archive section, and also in this very YouTube video that we're presently recording right now. So thank you for participating. Remember, uh, in this contest, there's kind of some, some interesting stuff going on with bugs. We will be submitting this over to EHG so that they know what people discovered while participating in this contest. I didn't intend for the contest to become like a bug hunting mission, but if you were following along in the contest Tempest discussion uh, Discord thread, you'll see that a lot of the conversation here was around, does this thing work? Does it not work? Does this actually work? Is it bugged? Is it supposed to work? There were a lot of people trying to figure out exactly what the hell was going on with this skill. So this is the very first build contest that we did with Last Epoch being substantially bigger than it's ever been in the past. I didn't want to advertise this build to every single content creator out there because I wanted to have a reasonable number of submissions so that we could actually test out the systems that we have in place for like the preliminary voting stuff. I think the preliminary voting went okay. I'm open to suggestions for how we can better handle this in the future. Some things that I already want to do will be uh, doing the local time zones instead of just telling you everything in EST time zones. Um, I need to watch out for students who have final exams taking place at the same time as the contest because I know that there's a lot of students out there in college who love playing action RPGs. So we would like to also cater to their audience. We might also host this on a different day of the week right now we have this going from friday to friday but that excludes that tends to exclude people who are like working during the weekends so maybe in the future we'll try something that goes like from a tuesday to a tuesday or a wednesday to a wednesday so those are the first couple things that are in my mind but if you have a recommendation for how we could run this contest better now that we have lots and lots of people playing last epoch feel free to let me know you can dm me on discord you can slide into discord or you can just let me know in a response in the comment section of this video here but we have uh, some new melee skills on the block and they have good AOE and really good damage and they feel fun as hell to play. So that's just wonderful. Thanks for being here. Thanks for participating. I'll see you next time.